Thank you for choosing 414. In the next few minutes, we will discuss the new Corporate Sustainability Reporting Directive, or the CSRD. We will go over the definition, the context and substance of this directive. We will also discuss the varying requirements according to your company's size and how it can benefit your business. Now, what does the CSRD do exactly? The CSRD requires companies to disclose non-financial information, placing focus on environmental, social and governance aspects. But this is not all it does. The CSRD goes beyond compliance. Companies have a chance to show their dedication to sustainability and gain a competitive edge. Interestingly, financial benefits align with this approach. How? Let's see an example. Companies with high EU taxonomy alignment trade at significant premiums, with 35% rise per earnings and 14% EV to EBITDA premiums. Numbers which signal the market's recognition and rewards for sustainable practices. It's a win-win scenario, where sustainability and financial interests align for long-term success. But before we continue with the CSRD itself, we must first understand its context. The CSRD is one of the most important and recent directives. It is part of the EU's initiative to direct investments towards sustainable projects in line with the EU Green New Deal. The CSRD builds upon an existing directive, the NFRD. However, its scope is more extensive as it applies to more companies and presents more requirements. For instance, the CSRD introduces a new classification system, or taxonomy, which serves to identify the so-called green activities across the economy. You might have heard of it as the EU taxonomy. Moreover, the CSRD mandates that both financial market participants and companies disclose on their approach to integrating ESG into their risk processes. This compliance process is carried out via the SFDR and the CSRD accordingly. Now let's see how the CSRD does just that. There are two main concepts at the core of the CSRD. The ESRS, European Sustainability Reporting Standards, and the concept of double materiality. The ESRS sets the structure and disclosure requirements that companies, banks and insurance companies in scope will need to report on. And the double materiality refers to the two forms of materiality, inside out and outside in, which companies must report on. On the one hand, outside in materiality considers how external ESG factors can influence a company's financial and operational performance. On the other hand, the inside-out materiality focuses on how a company's activities impact the environment and society. This will be facilitated through the use of the European Single Electronic Format, also known as the ESEF, and compliance within the European Sustainability Reporting Standards. Now, who does it apply to? The CSRD aims at ensuring a level playing field among companies across the EU. It reaches virtually all sectors and includes all company sizes, ranging from publicly listed entities to small and medium-sized enterprises. Even non-EU companies listed in the EU regulated markets are brought under its disclosure requirements, which gives the regulation an international outreach. The only exception at the moment are micro-enterprises and private SMEs. By this point you're wondering, when will the CSRD be relevant for me? The timelines for CSRD compliance vary based on the type and size of your company. If your company is a large EU company, either publicly listed or private, you will need to start complying with the general standards of the CSRD from the financial year 2024. This means that from 2025 onwards, you will need to provide annual disclosures according to the general sustainability reporting standards set by the EU. Listed SMEs also fall under the scope of this dysregulation. If you're publicly listed, small or medium-sized enterprise, you have a slightly longer time frame to prepare. Listed SMEs, excluding micro-enterprises, are expected to start applying the standards from the financial year 2026, which means that your sustainability CSRD reporting should begin in 2027. 
Private SMEs, on the other hand, are mostly exempt from the CSRD. However, specific high-risk sectors will need to start complying from 2026, with their first reports coming out in 2027. Keep in mind that these deadlines apply only to the general standards. The detailed sector-specific standards will become relevant one year after the EU Commission has adopted them and published them in the official journal. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video has helped you better understand the CSRD overall and also comprehend how it can help you as a company. For more information about sustainability regulation and the next updates, please don't forget to leave your email, link to our newsletter and keep an eye out for our next videos.